Hello and welcome to People's Dispatch. I am Prashant and you are watching Around the World in 8 Minutes, where we bring you news from working class and popular movements across the globe. In our first story, we take you to South Africa, where students are protesting for their rights amidst a countrywide uprising on issues related to financial support for them. A 20-year-old student died on Tuesday noon after being shot by private security guards. The protests began on the campus of the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg on Monday morning against the alleged betrayal of the authorities. We were just scared that there today, uh, waiting for the SRC to come back with the feedback from the management. Uh, so while we were still there, uh, three of the supervisors uh, of the security guards, they, they just came and provoked us. They wanted us to just uh, uh, disperse there. Then that's when the fight started. So while we were uh, fighting with the security guards, uh, then one of them decided to take out the, the gun and he shot more than five times, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have noticed after that, no, one of our comrades was shot. Hundreds of students who had come to register for the new academic year from across the country were left homeless as a result of this betrayal by the authorities. The management had previously promised that students who were eligible for the hardship fund would be allowed to register for the new academic year and seek accommodation. So long as they owed the university, less than 100,000 rand. This hardship fund is an emergency fund for students who cannot pay outstanding debts on time. However, on Monday, when the registration process was opened, students who came from as far as Western Cape, which is 1,000 kilometers from the city, were not allowed to register on account of outstanding debts. Hundreds of students were thus left homeless. Student Representative Council President Sisanda Aluta said that there are students who are actually sleeping in the libraries due to this. Outraged at the university administration, at least 100 students marched to the campus, disrupting some classes and departments. The SRC sought a meeting with the management that evening. When no relief was offered to the students till Tuesday, during discussions, they gathered before an off-campus building called the Solomon Malangu House with the aim of launching a hunger strike. The peaceful demonstrations were met with private security guards who were brought on the campus by the management to make up the protest. SRC President Aluta noted that the management, which was unwilling to provide financial relief to distressed students, was quick to spend 2 million South African rands to hire security guards to crack down on the protesters. About 560 kilometers to the southeast of Johannesburg, the city of Durban also witnessed protests in a number of universities, where students were unhappy about the delay in the release of funds under the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, NSFAS. The scheme provides financial assistance to pursue education at public universities or at technical and vocational education and training institutions for students whose total household income does not exceed 350,000 rands annually. Covering the entire cost of the tuition fee, registration fee and learning material, apart from subsidizing transport, accommodation and meals, this scheme has been crucial in allowing youngsters from poor South African families to continue studying beyond the secondary level. Delays in releasing the funds would be a debilitating blow to the students dependent on the scheme. A video posted on Twitter showed student members of the Economic Freedom Fighters Party, a populist breakaway from the ruling African National Congress, fleeing from armed guards wielding sheets and batons on Tuesday. A 20-year-old student was shot in the abdomen by a private security guard outside an administrative building on the Steve Biko campus. Later, he died in the hospital while receiving treatment. EFFSC gave a call to shut down all the universities in the city for a day, in demand with a demand for free registration, free education, and in solidarity with the students of Durban University of Technology. In our second story, we look at the Indian youth protest against rising unemployment and a crackdown on dissent. On February 7th, thousands of youth from various student unions, youth organizations, and movements across the country came together in the capital, New Delhi, to protest against rising unemployment and government crackdowns on dissent. The youth marched together to create a national platform, challenging the right-wing government of the Bharatiya Janata Party, led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The organizations constituting the platform, which included the All India Students Association, the Chhatra Yuva Sangharsh Samiti, Youth for Suraj, Students for Society, Yuva JDS, Samajwadi Chhatra Sabha and others, started the Young India Adhikar March, Young India's March for Rights, from Delhi's Red Fort and concluded at Parliament Street. The youth marched in a protest against the four and a half years of the Modi regime, during which students in dozens of campuses, including Jawaharlal Nehru University, Film and Television Institute of India, Benares Hindu University, and Punjab University have faced sedition cases, brutal crackdowns, and repression 
by the administrations and the government. They also face rustication in many cases. At the same time, the government's anti-youth and inefficient policies have led to a drastic increase in the unemployment rate. Recent data collected by the National Sample Survey Organization of India found that unemployment in the country is at its highest in 45 years. The joblessness seems to have soared after 2016 when Modi introduced demonetization, a move which made 86% of the currency owned by Indian citizens illegal tender. The highly unpopular decision has been heavily criticized for slowing India's economy, causing deep distress to the working class and small businesses, and even leading to around 100 people losing their lives. The youth also highlighted the high number of vacant public sector posts and the increasing amount of contractualization of government jobs. To talk more about the youth protest, we talked to Sucheta De. More than 60 student youth organizations, student unions and youth movements who have faced and fought against the Modi government in last five years came together and held this march. The Modi government came to power, was elected to power, promising more than two, uh, two crore uh, new jobs to the youth every year. But what the youth has faced in last five years is a systematic disposition from dignified jobs, from right to education, a push out of the marginalized from uh, universities, from schools and colleges, and a systematic assault on our freedom of expression. And the youth who had faced the Modi government in last five years came together to demand their rights. The Young India National Coordination Committee had earlier released a Young India Charter where we have demanded 10% of the GDP to be spent on education. We demanded that 24 lakhs government jobs which are lying vacant must be filled immediately. We demanded that right to education, right to employment must be recognized as a uh, fundamental right in India. At the same time, we have seen a systematic assault on uh, the affirmative policies in India, the reservation for the marginalized SCST and OBCs. The department-wise roster that has come uh, in faculty reservations in uh, colleges and universities is going to destroy all possible opportunities of representation of the marginalized. We have demanded that the constitutionally mandated reservation must be filled up. Indian universities have become prison houses for its women students. Discriminatory curfew timing are in place. The Young India Charter also demanded an immediate uh, that the discriminatory, the uh, gender discriminatory norms must end immediately. And the Rohit Act to end caste based discrimination should also be enacted. Thank you. That's all for this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more stories and videos about people's movements, please check out our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Hey, Qatar, hey,